interested in making these brass and Kyrie shell mobile earrings, then stay tuned. Supplies needed. One brass 22 gauge 2.5 inch diameter disc. One brass 22 gauge 2 inch disc. And you can find these online. A uh, sharpie to mark your holes. Some 20 gauge brass wire. You can get this anywhere. You'll also need a thingamajig to make the part that connects to holding it in your ear. You'll see that a little bit later. You'll also need a Dremel if you have. I use a Dremel and I use a rubber bit. You can also use a metal file. It'll just take you twice as long to clean up all of your edges. You'll need a ruler to mark your lines because you'll be cutting these um, circle discs. You will also need a hole puncher. Um, since these earrings are mobile, you'll be required to punch a hole in them. You can do it the old fashioned way, but why hurt your muscles when this works uh, a lot better? You'll also need a um, ball peen hammer because you'll be texturizing the disc, and of course, you'll be using the ball peen side. Um, you can find these online or at your local hardware stores. You'll need some um, boat cutters. You can get these at Home Depot or online as well. You'll also be using various um, pliers. So you'll see some flat nose. I have a bigger pair, small pair, medium pair. And you'll also be using round nose pliers. These will be used to make the earring, um, what are they called? The ear connector parts of the earrings. Also be needing a stainless steel block to texturize your disc followed by a rubber block. This is to reduce some of the sound from hammering. You can find all of these supplies in AC Moore, Michaels or Amazon and as well as a sand block. So the first thing I'll be doing is marking where I'm going to cut both discs into half moons. Don't worry if you see any writing or previous scratchings on, on uh, my disc from the Sharpie because they'll wash off with some Castile soap and a bristle brush. So all I've done is just taken my Sharpie, put a dot where I think the middle of the circle is, lined up uh, my, with my ruler and drew a straight line down the middle. If you don't think your line is in the exact middle of the circle, don't worry about it because you can always just adjust your cutting as you see I'm about to do here. So once you have your line written, you just want to go ahead and take your boat cutters. Put, place the disc as far back within the boat cutters as you can because this will give you the most momentum making it easier for you to cut and it will also help give you a straight line as you see here. So just place it in the middle and just cut straight down the line. So I've done that for the 2 inch brass disc and I'm going to do that for the 2 and a half inch. And if you can notice my line is a little off center so I'm balancing that by just cutting it a little more towards the other side of the circle. Hoping that this will give me a perfect match and it did. To make the triangles for the tops of your earrings you're going to take one of your 2 inch brass discs, mark it and cut it just as you've done the half disc previously and then you'll have the triangle as you see me doing here. Now we're going to be texturizing our earrings using our stainless steel block, our rubber block, and our sand for noise reduction and I also have some books lying around that I use for extra noise reduction as well. So you're going to take your half moons that you've cut and it doesn't matter which side you hammer on, uh, I just have a preference of using the smooth side up as you see here. You're going to take your ball peen hammer and you're going to be using the ball peen side of your hammer and a lot of muscles and you're just going to simply get to work and as you get halfway through you're going to notice that your half moon is starting to bend a little bit from hammering so what you want to do is take and flip it on the opposite side take the hammer side of your ball peen hammer whack it a few times and it'll smooth right on out so at this point you're just going to be texturizing then flipping over the earring to, to flatten it out and then flipping it back over to texturize. 
So this is just showing you the difference between a disc that's been texturized versus one that hasn't. It's your preference, but I prefer textured disc for my earrings. So you want to go ahead and do this for all of the pieces that you've cut out. And as you can see here, I've done all the pieces. It's taken some time, but we're now ready to move on to the next part of our earrings. Now we're going to be marking where our holes will be going for our mobile earrings. So you just want to go ahead and take your sharpie, eyeball where you think the middle of your earring is and place your dot. The great thing about sharpie is that if you make a mistake you can always just simply wipe it off real quick and retry where you think the middle is. I also find that you should probably place the dot on the back side of the earring meaning the side you have not textured because the hole puncher does leave a slight mark once you use it. I didn't do that for these but I realized it and corrected the mistake for future earrings but the mark is barely visible. So after you do this you're going to now move on to the next part. So now that we have all of our earrings marked for where the holes are going to go you want to simply grab your hole puncher, line it up on the dot and punch through. The good thing about this hole puncher is that it has a raised bit so if you find you might make a mistake you can place you can use a little bit make an indent check it to make sure it's lined up perfectly and then go through. So now we're going to just collect all the bits from the hole puncher because I use these for future soldering um, earrings that I do. Now we're going to make the ear wires for our earrings. I use a peg uh, thingamajig to make the ear wires along with 20 gauge brass wire. The ear wires that I make are actually called French ear wires. There's no particular reason why I do them. I just find that they're sturdy and they last a very, very long time. So I'm going to take my 16 gauge, I'm sorry, my 20 gauge brass wire, excuse me, and I'm trying to do this upside down to show you how to do this, so pardon the mistakes, but you're going to take your 20 gauge brass wire, bring it around the top part of the circles that you have and which should be the bigger circle you want to go in between the bigger circle and a little circle and then go all the way around the smaller circle as you can see and I'm going to hold it up for you to see so the wire went around in between the two circles and then came back around the bottom and this is how I make my French air wires for my earrings and then I measure about two circles out and take my boat cutters and give it a cut so I have a good amount to wrap around the ear wire as you'll see later in the video. So now you want to go ahead and make both ear wires as you see I've done here and then adjust them to make them nice and straight. Now that we have our ear wires made I'm going to go on ahead and move on to making the jump rings for our earrings. I find that using 18 gauge brass wire is better but I didn't have any so for this tutorial I'm using 20 gauge brass wire. So what you want to do is go ahead and take your 18 gauge brass wire which you should use and uh, have a bead -a line uh, jump ring maker. You can find these anywhere online or at Amazon and Michaels or you can just simply buy jump rings but for me it's cheaper and material to just make them myself. So I use the larger or actually I'm using the smaller of the two circles and I'm wrapping the wire trying to feed it so that it goes towards the outside and I'm just going to be wrapping a number of times because we're going to need about one, two, three, four, about four jump rings. So I just wrap it a number of times so I can have plenty to work with, cut it with my boat cutters and then try to find the end of the first wrap and cut all a straight line all the way down as you'll see me doing here with the boat cutters. Um, you should file these down but I find that the way that I use them that it doesn't bother the earrings that I don't file them um, the, after I cut them but when I do sterling silver and gold earrings I do typically file them down. So now as you can see we have perfect circles. So what I'm doing here is just simply taking my ball peen hammer and flattening out the dents in the earrings that were made when we hole punched them just to make sure the whole earring is nice and straight or flush so that when we connect them everything looks nice. So you just want to simply take the ball peen side or the hammered side and flatten out the earrings. And as you can see here now I'm just taking and flattening out all the earrings giving them one last hammer. And then I'm going to take the jump rings that we made and I'm going to take and give them a few hammers or a few whacks with the hammer side of the ball peen so that they make them a little extra sturdy and strong because hammering them 
makes them more stiff so that they'll stay closed in your earrings and you'll be able to wrap them with style without worrying about them breaking. So as you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and hammer all four jump rings. So now what you see me doing here is stiffening the French air wire for our earrings. Again, to make sure that they're nice and sturdy and strong for our earrings. And the way that I do this is I simply take the hammer side of my ball peen hammer and I give the earrings a, about a 3-4 taps. Um, you should do this on either side just to make sure that you're giving it a nice and even hammer all the way around the air wires. So you just want to tap it nice and gently, go all the way up and down around the air wire as far as you can go without tapping in between the two wires. So make sure you, when you're hammering and you're stiffening the air wires that you're only tapping up to where that line is uh, perpendicular. Do not go past that line because then you'll be damaging the loops and it'll wind up breaking your air wires. So you want to do this for both French air wires like so. Hey everyone, you see me because now we're going to be smoothing the edges of all the pieces we cut. So in order to do this, I'm going to be putting on a dust mask because there will be pieces of rubber flying as well as my glasses. Yes, I put those stones on myself. If you're interested in seeing a DIY on how to do this, let me know down below. But anyway, so you want to make sure you cover up your eyes and your nose. And I'm going to be using, like I said, this rubber attachment that I buy downstairs buy downtown in the jewelry supply store and I use my Dremel and I usually put it on I'm trying to show you about between the four and the six setting um, I find that that's a good setting to go ahead and um, use not too fast not too slow so once you have everything set up um, and I'm you doing all this on a wet paper towel to catch all of the um, the dust that'll be flying you don't see in the background I do have a fan yes I should be using uh, an exhaust system I know but I'm in my house and I'm just doing this one pair so hey I didn't say I was a professional um, so what you want to do is just go ahead turn it on and go ahead and get your um, the ends of your earrings just go all the way around the, the the pieces that you cut and this is to make sure that you're not cutting yourself because these are sharp edges and I find that the rubber helps and gets all the edges so I'm going to do this for all of my earrings however if you don't have a Dremel you can use this metal file and I use the smaller of the two ends it just is going to take twice as long to do and you have a lot of ends to file which is why I use a Dremel Once all the edges are smooth on all the pieces that you've cut, you want to move on to your French air wires and using the rubber or your metal file, you want to smooth out the end that will be going within your earring. Don't worry about the bits that are getting on the French air wires because again, I said I cleaned them with a bristle brush and some Castile soap. So just go ahead and smooth out all the edges for your French air wires like so. So here are all the final components of our earrings. If you're interested in learning how to wire wrap the cowrie shells, check out my page and there will be a video to show you how to do that. So what you want to go ahead and do is take the wire wrapped cowrie shells that you have using your round nose pliers and create the circle which is the top part of the earrings. And I find the best way to do this is by taking the very tip of your uh, round nose pliers, the smallest bit and then bending it with the wire at a 90 degree angle. This is to give it as tight as a, uh, to the wire wrap circle as you can possibly get. Once you have that bend, then take your finger and then wrap the wire around the top part of the circle. That gives you a nice good uh, circle to start with to make your wire wrap to go around the bottoms of uh, your earrings in which you place the hole. So you want to do make these circles for both Kyrie shells like so. So now you want to take your wire wrapped Kyrie shells that you've created a circle for the top of the hanging part of the shell and place it with the front facing the texture side of the earring. So both the texture side and the front of the Kyrie shell on the same side. Then you want to take your round nose pliers 
holding it within the circle that you created and begin wrapping the tail end of the wire wrap all the way around as many times as you can. So as you can see here, I held it, began wrapping it. So now it's sticking out at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm just going to wrap the tail all the way around, like I said, the Kari shell wrapping, making sure that it's a nice and secure wrap. So now they can dangle without me ever worrying about the shells falling off. Now our Kari shells have been attached to the bottoms of our earrings. We're going to go ahead and take our jump rings and begin attaching all of the components. So as you see me doing here, I'm taking a jump ring, having the earring facing outside to, away from me. Then I'm taking the next component and doing the same. In order to close the jump ring, I'm going to be taking a medium sized pair and a large pair of flat nose pliers and just simply begin wiggling the jump ring into place slowly. You don't want to rush this process because you can damage your circles and this is also why I said 18 gauge wire is better because it's a lot more sturdy and once you wiggle it into place, it's not going to move. For me, in order to make sure that my circles are perfectly round, I'm just gently bending at the point where the two the wires meet and just giving it a slight bend. So now that I have the first part completed, I'm just going to go ahead and assemble the rest of the earrings like so. We're going to move on to assembling the French air wire to the rest of our earrings. So you're going to grab the top of your earring facing outward and your French air wire facing inward. This is so when you insert it, when it flips, it's facing the right way. So as you see, I have my French air wire facing backwards and the earring facing frontwards. And now once the air wire is inserted, it's the right way. So I'm just showing it to you because I realized that it was too far away. So the air wire is backwards. The earrings front. You insert it, it flips, and there you have your air wire. So you want to insert both air wires like so. Now you want to go ahead and close up your air wire. <clears throat> I grab my round nose pliers for this part and my medium flat nose pliers, and you want to begin wrapping the tail around that part of the air wire that goes into your ear as tight as possible. And I usually wrap the tail around about a good two, three times um, before it runs out. I don't typically cut it off. I just use the whole tail um, because once I find, once it cleans up, it looks very nice. So I'm just going to wrap the tails around both times and then tuck and tuck them into the ear wires like so. Now if you notice there's a slight offset of the circle with the top of the air wire so I'm just taking my my flat nose pliers and gently smushing it I know that's not a real term but kind of moving it around so that it perfectly lines up with the top of the air wire so you want to make sure you do that for both sides so your earrings aren't sitting off kilter. you see me doing here is just one last final uh, straightening out of the French air wire so everything lines up perfectly. I'm taking my medium flat nose pliers and placing it back within the mold that I have in the thingamajig and kind of rolling it upwards and giving the bottom a slight little bend. Not on purpose but it happens um, just so that both ear wires are the same exact length. So you want to do that for both earrings. Again, this step is optional, but look at the difference it makes in, uh, in terms of the final finish of the ear wires. So I'm going to do this for both ear wires like so.
Now that both ear wires are complete, I'm doing the final bend so that once you place them inside your ears, they don't move. And in order to make, so, make sure that the bend is even on both earrings, I just took my Sharpie, marked a, a good spot on my flat nose pliers for where the earring would stop. So then I placed the earring inside the flat nose plier up to the line and then gave it its last bend. So now it's a complete French ear wire. So you want to do that for both earrings and then you should be all set. What I'm doing here is just eyeballing to make sure that both earrings are the same length. Again, you can use something else to do this, but the earrings are all set and ready to be worn. So here are our completed DIY mobile brass and cowrie shell earrings. Look at how long and beautiful they are and they, how they move with your every movement. I feel like they go so well with my hair just because it's so wild and free and I feel like the earrings are wild and free as well. So thank you for watching this video. Please be sure to check out my other videos. Like, be sure to subscribe and give me feedback. Tell me what you guys think. Thank you.